Oh, kia ora tātou, no mai haere mai, welcome to Community Research uh, and our fabulous webinar on Indigenous Evaluation Using Traditional Knowledge to Guide Evaluation Theory and Practice. We're really lucky to be joined in partnership with the team from Mā Te Rai, the Māori Evaluation Team, who are here to share their insights as to how to apply Indigenous and Kaupapa Māori values to research and what that looks like in the community. So I'm really grateful to be uh, welcoming in a co-host, uh, Kataraina Pipi, a dear friend, um, and also an amazing uh, wahine toa. I'm going to pass the rako over to you, Ehoa, to guide us through the rest of our session. Kia ora tato. Kia ora Kay Marie, and kia ora to everyone who has joined this webinar from near and far from here in Aotearoa and throughout the world as well. We have people online from the Netherlands and from Canada and from Hawaii. So welcome, welcome to uh, this opportunity. Thank you to, to Community Research providing us with a platform and an opportunity to share our, um, our knowledge about Indigenous evaluation. So just an overview of the presentation. I'd like to um, firstly um, introduce Mātirai and talk about the Māori Evaluation Association. Next slide, please. And what they do. And then provide some acknowledgements. So for those who are not aware of how some of the developments in the Indigenous evaluation space, um, we'll talk about the role of traditional knowledge and evaluation and the importance of cultural paradigms. This is also an opportunity for us to um, promote our Indigenous Peoples Conference on Evaluation that's happening here in Rotorua in February 2019. So Mā Te Rai, the Māori Evaluation Association, is about three years old. Um, so we're relatively new as an association. Um, here is our mission and our vision. So as Māori evaluators, Many of us work in a range of different contexts, whether that be as independent evaluators working with, or working within a mainstream setting, um, or internal evaluators working as part of organisations. We're really interested in uh, looking at mobilising evaluation as a tool for transformation for iwi, for our tribes and for our Māori communities in general. Our families, our whānau, hapu and iwi, our sub-tribes and tribes, so that our, our sub-tribes and tribes and people are able to um, enhance and, and use evaluation to advance their work. Our strategic intent, so we have a particular interest as an association in strengthening our relationships amongst ourselves first and foremost as Māori working in the field, so that we are really accountable to one another and have support uh, able to give support to one another for our work and extend our relationships to our cousins in other Indigenous nations um, and, sh and share our knowledge and our knowing about what makes our practice unique as Māori working in this field. Our whakatauki or our proverb is mā te rai ka rangatira ai. So our desire is and our thinking as we've reflected on who are we as Māori evaluators and what makes us unique and what is our, our aspiration is to look deep, far and wide, you know, with clarity and critical consciousness and to be grounded in our Māori worldview and to see what see with our eyes, our mind, our body and spirit so that our, our we are guided by this proverb um, which reminds us to look back and through our Māori eyes and um, at how we are viewing program services, making judgments, etc. We'd like to acknowledge our Indigenous evaluation partners, and these are some of who exists in the international landscape. Some 20 years ago, about 15 of us Māori evaluators had the opportunity to travel to Hawaii and to, to Hui with our Hawaiian uh, brothers and sisters and to share our stories about our work and our experiences and at that hui and what came out of that hui was the real desire to see ourselves uh, come together and collaborate as indigenous people working in this space so we also want to acknowledge the work of the center for culturally responsive evaluation and assessment um, who have a meeting that happens every year alongside uh, the work of eval indigenous um, and on eval indigenous we have 
Fiona Cram and Debbie Goodwin are representing Aotearoa New Zealand and Māori in that space. So we want to acknowledge that Mātearai is part of a global movement um, for, for Indigenous people to come together in this space. So there's three parts to our presentation this afternoon. Well, this, the first is uh, looking at the role of traditional knowledge and how that traditional knowledge guides our evaluation theory and practice. And today joining us on this webinar, uh, we are lucky to have three of the four keynote speakers who will be part of our conference next year. The first is Dr. Manilani Maya, and she's um, coming in um, via video, a pre-recorded message to talk with us and share her knowledge about um, how she perceives, how she sees traditional knowledge and the part that it plays in evaluation. So we welcome you to sit back for five minutes or so and and listen to the wonderful Dr. Manulani Maya. Paul, my name is Manulani Aluli Meyer. I am the fifth daughter of Emma Aluli and Harry Meyer from Mokapu, um, uh, Belleville, Illinois, and Hilo Paliku um, from the islands of Oahu, Moko Kealve, and Maui. I am an indigenous epistemologist. That is someone who's passionate about the role of, um, of not indigenous knowledge. Um, and for me now, indigeneity is a synonym for continuity. So things that make sense um, and things that are relevant for our times um, that, are, that have meaning at the center and the care for land and people at the center. So um, those are my priorities and um, that's what I do in the world. And uh, that's what I do inside my own personal life. And I'm led by um, spirit and the love of land and the love of people. The main ideas for me are going to really look at um, the, uh, the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of, of evaluation. Um, and and um, I am going to do, uh, I am going to think about this more and um, put, um, uh, explore the actual application of what um, uh, measurement means to knowledge production, what reflection means um, to the application of that knowledge production, and what um, witnessing means to the continuity of it. It's a very, very important time for us. We cannot view indigeneity as an other, or as a, um, even as a better, I, I'm convinced with that. We have to be aware that we are part of the cacophony of diversity in the world. And so indigeneity, indigenous for me, is no longer a racial discussion. We're, um, Hawaii, I'm part um, everything, but I'm mostly Hawaiian, whatever that means. Um, but I know what it means. It really means love of land, service to people. So principles, if our research and if our, um, if our evaluation isn't animated with the principles of continuity and the principles of our kupuna, of our elders that really, really, really brought us to this point safely, then we are guessing. So that's why um, this is not a theory. I, mean, I don't theorize. We, we have knowledge. And the knowledge that we posit must be clearly rendered in today, for today, because too many theories, too many theories, too many guessing games, too many darts thrown at a dartboard two miles away. We know how to educate our children. We know the, 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 the priorities then are, do we trust our knowing? Can we shore up our, our courage? Can we develop um, evaluation systems that are liberating and not oppressive, uniform, uh, assimilative? Um, can we just stop beating us down with literacy? You know, can we use different tools of excellence that our kupuna always had and move into modern realms of relevance that inspire our kids and don't dumb us down? So yeah, indigeneity has and indigenous knowledge has a key role to play in worldwide awakening in worldwide awakening. We just can't be arrogant about it. We can't be separatist. It's an inclusive movement. It's not an exclusive movement. That's what I know about continuity. Um, and we have to be clear with each other how to trust each other's excellence 
and not try to, you know, figure, not try to take each other down because you're different than me. Uh, difference is what we have in common. And um, that's what I love to tell people. We are the same differently. You got to have that holistic. You got to have that hologram in there. You got to have the opposite. The, you know what I mean? What makes one thing better than the other? Oh, that's right. Your interpretation of it. So for me personally, hermeneutics, the philosophy of interpretation is now on fire. And now because we are in places of power, in places of, in, um, of influence, our interpretation, the philosophy of interpretation is called hermeneutics. Our interpretation is now being asked for on the planet. So we better not use our voice to say, um, let's just do the same thing that was done to us. You know. Once you start to trust your own voice, you're going to step into the wairua of your kupuna and the essence of mohiotanga and what it means to really know something and, and, and push away from the pool sides and go into the deep water. Um, what I have to say to conference attendees is um, be ready to get to know um, other people. Be ready to get to know yourself in a deeper way. Be ready to, um, to trust yourself deeper and feel um, committed and recommit yourself to uh, a different frequency, different wairua of uh, clarity so that we can do this work together more effectively and, um, and collaboratively around the world. It's time. It's time for us to be clear. It's time for us to be more loving. It's time for us to be courageous collectively. And I know we can do this together. So, mahalo nui. Okay, so, mahalo nui, Dr. Manilani Maya. Thank you very much yeah. for those wonderful words of wisdom. Um, Dr. Manilani will be joining us as a keynote presenter at our conference in February in Rotorua next year. So, some very inspiring words, stepping into the way you are feeling the essence of our, our mōhiotanga, our knowledge base. We welcome now, I'd like to introduce um, Richard Weston, who is another keynote presenter at our conference. My name is Richard Weston. I'm, the, I'm a Merriam man from the Torres Strait, um, which is in uh, far north Queensland, um, between um, mainland Australia and Papua New Guinea. That's where my um, ancestral home is. My job, my day job is with the Healing Foundation, um, and I'm based in Canberra. I'm the Chief Executive Officer. The Healing Foundation is a national Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander organisation that is um, with a mission to end intergenerational trauma um, in our communities and, and support our families and communities to do to heal. But when we go and work with communities, we just we start from a an assumption that our people know what to do. They know they they know what the problems are, um, and with a bit of support and a bit of structure, they can develop the solution. So, uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander knowledges play a key part of our key role in our work, and and what our evaluations have told us are the things that make a difference, the things that support healing for our people, and. This is across the board, it, it, you know, regardless of whether we're dealing with young people, we're dealing with men's healing, or we're working with stolen generations, there are common, common elements that um, make a difference and, and help people to heal, and that is a connection to culture. Um, so, you know, knowing where you, who you are, where you're from, and who your people are, and being able to connect into the cultural life, the ceremonial life of, of the community, whether you're, regardless of the environment, whether you're in a remote environment or a, an urban environment, um, having strong identity. So um, people becoming very clear about, um, you know, where they're from, where they belong to in this country um, has an impact in um, motivating and strengthening people towards taking the healing journey. Um, Strong relationships, um, you know, strengthening relationships within communities and within families, um, and also basing the project, the programs on, um, you know, low, low, local cultural um, protocols and issues. So, 
Um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture is central to our healing. A critical missing ingredient is that we're still largely relying on Western philosophies and Western ideas and um, Western knowledges to define what is success and what is failure. Embracing uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and that history has a lot to offer the whole of Australia. Um, you know, Australia is an ancient country um, and uh, Indigenous people have some amazing ways and of looking at, at how this country, how we relate to country. And it's not just, it's not just an economic um, resource for us. It's, it's very much a spiritual resource. Um, it's a cultural resource and it's uh, it really um, establishes who we are as human beings and uh, our place in the world, our place in the universe. So, um, you know, we attach a lot of meaning to be to being, um, you know, to where where we're from, um, you know, what our country is, um, who our families are, who our who our ancestors are, because that's the way we relate to each other. I think, in terms of um, overcoming Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander disadvantage in Australia, there's a lot to learn from our traditional knowledge and our traditional wisdoms uh, it's, it's our nature you know to work collectively um to focus on the spiritual aspects and seeing our spiritual well-being and our social emotional well-being is very important to our economic and social well-being so we don't we, we tend not to separate those those issues but um mainstream society does they break everything down into very simple um uh I don't know, simple little chunks of, of, of um, how you approach and try and deal with problems. It, we take a holistic view, so we don't disconnect our spiritual well-being from our economic well-being and our, you know, our ability to get an education. All of those, those things are connected to our identity, our culture and, and who we are in the world. So quite excited and pleased to have been invited to speak at this um, Indigenous conference, and I think it'll be a great opportunity to share share knowledge from across uh, across the globe, um, and you know, hope, hopefully, generate um, new ways, some new ways of thinking or new approaches. But also, I hope, hopefully, I, I suspect what it'll do is will confirm for a lot of us that what we're doing is that we're on the right track. I'm just really um, pleased to be be coming to New Zealand to participate and uh, just really looking forward to meeting people and, um, um, you know, being with Maori people on their country and uh, kia ora. Kia ora to you too, Richard Weston, and we're looking forward to that which you will bring as a keynote speaker to our conference um, on Indigenous evaluation. We want to acknowledge some of the bodies of work and those others that have uh, our, our colleagues who are working in the Indigenous research space, there's much that's been written around um, Indigenous research um, and you know, lots of so acknowledgements to those who are writing in that space and, and challenging our thinking and affirming and validating our Indigenous uh, well-being. So, um, researcher Sarah Minnie, Sean Wilson's work, Dr Linda Tuhiwai smith who's been uh, very influential in Kaupapa Māori research development here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and the work of, of Donna Mertens, Fiona Cram, and Ageli Chalisa in the Indigenous Pathways into Social Research. Um, next slide, please. In our Indigenous evaluation space, we too have been doing a lot more writing and thinking and um, sharing of our experiences in this space. I just want to acknowledge these uh, particular resources which we will make available the references to these resources for those who want to learn more about Indigenous evaluation. The NDE, uh, New Directions for Evaluation uh, Journal on Indigenous Evaluation that appears in the centre there um, is one that was put together um, by editors Fiona Cram, Catherine Tibbetts and Joan LaFrance um, and in that particular journal, it refers to uh, a definition of eva Indigenous evaluation as evaluation that is practiced by, for, and with Indigenous peoples. 
Um, and so moving into the next part of our uh, presentation, part two is referring to the importance of cultural paradigms. And I would now like to introduce um, Paura Tehuri Hanganui, who is also one of our keynote presenters. So tēnā koe Paura. Tēnā koe Katarana. Uh, like so Paura, would you like to introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about your work, the context that you work in, and then share some thoughts around cultural paradigms in the evaluation and research space and the importance of them. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for the invitation this morning to, um, I suppose, give my thoughts uh, on the topic. And uh, my name is Paura Te Huri Hanganui. Uh, currently, I'm the CEO of Te Papa Takoro Aotearoa, which is a tribal organisation based in Rotorua, Central North Island of New Zealand. And uh, we're focused on the transformation of our tribal members as well as our communities in sport, uh, health and fitness, well-being, culture and education. Uh, I've been here for approximately around about 12 years, born and bred in Rotorua. Uh, come from a, a small tribe on the northwestern shores of Rotorua, uh, known as Ngāti Rangiwiwihi. And when I think of the world and I think of the work that I do, uh, it reminds me of growing up in this area underneath my grandfather. And the things that I had learnt over time around being a, a student of the environment and really resonating with some of the ancestral cultural par paradigms that I was fortunate enough to receive from my grandfather and thereafter a number of mentors. So when I think of uh, cultural paradigm shifts, I think of evaluation, I always continue to put myself in the space of uh, the natural environment and using the natural environment as metaphor to shape the way forward in the thinking that I do. Um, I think for me, it's traditional thought, traditional um, cultural practice for me, really stems from the idea of our ancestral knowledge. And I say ancestral knowledge because I believe we have to be accountable for the space that we work, that we breathe and that we live in. And at times we use other cultural paradigms and other methodologies to shape our current way of thinking. However, we are the culmination of thousands of years with a whakapapa or genealogy and one package that you call yourself. So for me to move forward to evaluate anything or to research or to assess anything in front of me, I must use the footsteps of my ancestors uh, to frame and to give me a way forward in that. So I'm very fortunate working for a tribal organisation because we've had over the last 10, 12 years here, a movement away from using common theory, common practice, some of the modern ideas and being really critical about what are those things over generation upon generation upon generation that are important and how does that inform our current work and practice uh, in this day and age. And we've moved our entire organisation to use those ancestral paradigms, cultural paradigms to shift our behaviours and to shift our work. Um, and so it's been really beneficial for us. One, we have to be more uh, accountable to our people and we have to be more accountable to ourselves, knowing ourselves, knowing the areas that we work in. So when it comes to evaluating that, there's a natural progression and uh, a flow into that area. So for me, going forward and looking forward to the conference that is coming up in February uh, 2019, uh, some of the things that I'll share is really around when we're looking at evaluating, researching or assessing anything, what is the intent behind that and how do we link that to ancestral intent? And we're trying to uh, fulfil that as an organisation uh, here currently. Kia ora, Paura. And um, as, a, as a practising evaluator, I know for myself that when I come upon organisations and individuals like yourself, it puts me on high alert in terms of my own cultural base because as Māori, when we engage together, if the process of evaluation is, or is a, if evaluation is a tool for assisting us to help um, make meaning of and learn from what we're doing, um, then really I think what I've, certainly what I've learned 
in the cultural paradigm space is that that paradigm needs to be an overarching framework for the way in which we look at data, in which we have conversations. So can you give us an example of where you've been part of an evaluation or, or evaluation, yeah, you've been part of an evaluation that has honed in on those cultural paradigms and it's been a good experience for you. Um, yeah. I think um, before, I, before I answer that question, Katarana, one thing we've got to realise is that the work that we do, no matter which area that we work in, is not in isolation. We're part of a wider and a greater system. If that is a cultural system, then we are one part of an intergenerational continuum and we are carrying on the work and carrying on the energy flow of that of the past. We are the conduit for that to provide that for the future. So if we're looking in that, particularly looking in that space around evaluation, one area that comes to mind that was really successful in terms of putting a management system on how we evaluate sport and recreation for us here is the work that was done uh, with in Sport New Zealand with Māori providers around the country called Hiranga Potama. And I think the standout um, area of that is that we use to frame the evaluative measures through the idea of framing it as Māori. So understanding what as Māori means, because we were all conscious that we're in evaluation in the past where it has gone wrong is that someone else has come in and evaluated us and put their own, own intent and own ideas upon us or we've been with someone else, we've done it by or with or, or, or external organisations coming in. But to take real ownership of evaluating your internal workings and the work that you're doing, you have to do it as your authentic self, in my opinion. The attempt in Hiranga Pautama within Sport New Zealand was to frame it in an as Māori theory and ideas. That took all the providers to a space to understand exactly what as Māori means in their a particular environment and how do you reach levels of excellence and trying to achieve being authentically Māori. So for me thinking about that particular process and thinking about evaluation over time I've come to the realization that evaluation or anything that we do is very much human centered in this modern day and age. If we look at it from an ancestral point of view, a cultural paradigm and a, and a traditional view, we need to look that the work that we do is not actually human centered, it's environmentally centered. So taking the idea of, of as Māori or as being as natural as you possibly can or being a product of your natural environment and working that through the work that you're doing, you get a totally different outcome and you get a totally different energy level that's uh, pushing and, and under underlying the intent of the work that you're doing. So huge successes around the country within that particular example. Kia ora, Paura. And um, um, one of the things that comes to mind as, as you talk is that this Māori ways of knowing and being, and of course I do remember as well in that collective of providers that were part of He Oranga Pautama, you had some quite um, unique groups or groups that had a particular, I mean, everybody operates in a particular context. So I also remember the um, the challenges and the rigorous discussion about as te arawa, as Ngāti Pro. Um, so there's this overarching as Māori, which when we collectively come together on a national level, we're seeking to find commonality. Um, uh, but there's that distinctiveness that we, we must hold on to and maintain. Have you had some examples, Paura, where um, evaluation and research has not worked well for you in your cultural paradigm? Oh, I think that's a, a daily discussion, that one. That's a daily example, I think, because the intent behind uh, some of the work that we do, and we are mainly government contracted, um, the, the, the master always wants their particular viewpoint put in place. And I think if it's not in partnership, if it's not done in good relationships, um, if we're not trying to advance those relationships, 
if we're not looking at things that um, are pushing to have a longevity to them, if there's not a system that works for both groups, let alone the group that the uh, evaluation is done upon, it's only a lose-lose situation. We're looking at a, a fiscal relationship as opposed to any transformative work that's been done. So it's been from my experience over the past probably six to eight years that um, things are starting to move into value-based and principle-based ideals, which is hugely aligned to Indigenous way of thinking. And I think this is, is starting to infiltrate a number of the government departments here in, in New Zealand, but I'm seeing this trend across the world that people are asking for more value. And it's not the fiscal or the data or the number value. It has its place in our world. However, when we're talking about transformation, what are the key elements that are going to transform the work and the people that you're working with or the environments that you're working with over a long period of time. And that's one of the biggest shifts that I've seen in recent times. So going back, I think 90% of the evaluations that I've been involved in have always come from an intent of counting digits, a fiscal um, base to it, but also that we've got a tick box mentality. We're far, far moved from that particular space, and that's why I believe value-based uh, evaluation and principle-based evaluation and work in general is uh, where things are starting to trend now. Even though some of those past examples of evaluation may not have been good, it's always a good space to start learning and understanding yourself better. But when, we, when I tend to move into using traditional ideals or ancestral ideals, it's because the intent from an ancestral point of view is around continuation, the continuation of whakapapa or life force and the intent around reaching excellence. If those, and that's a particular premise from my tribal area, if that's the intent in any work that we, we do, I think we're going to be successful. If the intent isn't right from the start, I believe that's when we start going off the rails a little bit. Sure. So, you know, on this webinar, we've got such a wide range of people, eh, Paola? We've got policymakers, we've got funders, we've got practicing evaluators, we've got people who are operating in communities and in whānau hapuiwi and in an international context. Um, one of the things that comes to mind for me too as I listen to you talk is that we need to build a collective understanding and our, our, our collective awareness around, um, you know, what's important when, when undertaking evaluation in Indigenous spaces, um, because there is a language, there is a, and there is a knowing, and we are not all the same. And often that's our challenge, isn't it, that um, providers of services and deliverers of programs are often delivering programs that have been developed and devised at a policy level um, miles apart from the reality on the ground for people. So what advice would you have to, say, commissioners of evaluations um, who really want to learn from um, people on the ground, from Fano, from those who are experiencing the services, what advice would you have for them about how to ensure that the um, the cultural aspects or the, the 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 true meaning and value of the program and service is um, realised through the evaluation process. Evaluation is a great space for everyone to understand the diversity of what's going on in that particular topic or that particular kaupapa you're working in. If I use the forest as a metaphor, there's ample space for all the trees to exist and all the wildlife and organisms to exist in that particular space. And they play the symbiotic relationship to ensure that they continue to exist. And I think at times when we're driven by policy or we're driven by other intent, it's someone else's priority that normally takes over. So I'm a firm believer that everyone can have their space if we just understand the systems and the relationship of those components that are going on in the system, whether they're policy, 
whether they're on the ground, grassroots with family, whānau, or whether they're anything in between. Everyone can have their particular space. That's why I think this value-based and principle-based driven ideals coming underneath is starting to reshape what the infrastructure looks like when we're starting to interact with one another and when we're trying to glean information and knowledge. I think over time there's been a distrust from whānau or the grassroots because the knowledge that we have is thousands upon thousands of years of observation sitting and looking at the natural environment and how it affects us. At times we look and have a, at times we look to see how we affect the natural environment, but traditionally and ancestrally we are on the long, we are on the bottom of that long line of genealogical influence. In this modern day, we're putting ourselves forward, and that's why I said earlier on that you know I don't think it's human centered, I think it's environmentally centered. If we step back and we have a look at the environment, doesn't matter who the players are then we can see where we are a part of, not that we are the driver of that environment. We are only a, a player in that environment. So as long as we get to this intent and understand that we can all contribute to whatever's going on and we can have a fair um, share of the pie, but that we're working with others in that particular space and there needs to be some negotiation that goes on and positioning that goes on, as opposed to where it used to be, uh, you know, probably 10 years ago, it was still top down. Then we tried the bottom up. I don't think it's either. As Manulani said, it's a mix of all of that. Mm -hmm. But as long as we are clear within ourselves and clear within our intent, I think everything else kind of smooths itself out into a positive outcome. Kia ora, tēnā koe paora. Looking forward to spending time with you in February in your homeland of Te Arawa, Rotorua, at our conference. Um, thank you very much, paora. I'd Thank like you. to um, tell tell our uh, viewers about our um, Indigenous Peoples Conference on Evaluation. So it is to be held the 7th to the 9th of February in Dotorua. We already have some uh, a range of people who have registered from throughout the world, actually. We're really looking forward to this opportunity to share our, our collective experience and knowing. We have uh, four key strands which will form part of the conference and they kind of build on some of the things that our keynote presenters have talked to us about. Um, as Ma said, I, when we looked at how would we structure the conference, we reflected on the range of different spaces that we're all working in. And um, for the environment, for example, um, in this strand, we want to learn from uh, those who've been working in this space about what are some of the challenges when we're evaluating initiatives and issues that are in, impacting on the environment. Uh, what are the ways that we as Indigenous evaluators are guided by our traditional knowledge in this space? What are some of the challenges? For our language and culture, here in Aotearoa we have a, we, a and have for some time over 20 to 30 years um, had a real revitalization of our language identity and culture and um, there's been some significant learnings for us about how do we evaluate language and culture specific programs and approaches so for example if we're evaluating a uh, kaupapa maori based program or a program that is, is in a uh, language speaking uh, environment you know, how do we ensure that we don't diminish or take away from the environment and the people um, and how we make sense and present back those findings. So we've had some real challenges around around language and culture. Our well-being, there's been um, in this space, there'll be opportunities for people to present their work occurring in the health, social services, justice space um, and to also learn in that space about what um, what are our people's aspirations and what does that look like? What does success look like for ourselves in the wellbeing space? Um, here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, our young people make up such a large percentage of our population and um, commonly what we say is that what we are doing today is about future-proofing for future generations. So what are we doing to ensure that 
uh, what we're evaluating and how we're evaluating is going to lay a really good platform for our next generation. There are two critical interconnecting themes that kind of will go across the conference as well. Firstly, how and in what ways can we draw upon traditional knowledge to guide our evaluation theory and practice? So we're really wanting to have an opportunity to be challenged as Indigenous evaluators. We'll have a kahui pakeke, a group of elders who will sit with us in our conference um, and share their knowledge and wisdom, listen to our conversations as well and make their contributions. Alongside that, some of our learnings as Māori evaluators, and many of us work in different ways, some of us work purely in, in our own domains and in kaupapa Māori spaces, um, have, a, have, a, have a desire to just primarily focus in that area. Others of our uh, other evaluators work in different spaces and mainstream environments, for example. Um, so racism and sorry about that, racism and privilege is alive and well in our communities as well as our profession. So what have we done and what do we need to do to further claim the space for our, our ways of knowing and being? So those are, are two key themes that it will be important for us to um, explore and provide space for us as Māori and as non-Māori to, to look and understand uh, what are some of the issues in that space. So as, as has been um, said, our keynote speakers include Kaura, uh, Dr. Manilani Aluli Maya um, from Hawaii, and Marcus Akuhata Brown, who spoke at our ANZIA Aotearoa New Zealand Evaluation Conference um, this year, and of course, Richard Weston from the Healing Foundation of Australia. So we're looking forward to, uh, to them joining us. Um, for those of you who are interested and want to find out more about the conference, uh, we do have a uh, conference website called Ma Te Rai. Um, so please check out the conference if you're interested in attending. So from me, I'd like to thank um, everybody, our keynote speakers for contributing, Tēnā Koe Paura. And once again, thank you to Community Research for providing um, this platform for us to come together and discuss this. And I'd like to um, hand back to Kay Marie now for her to add some further comments and then invite some questions. Well, kia ora tato. Um, firstly, thank you so much, um, Ehua, for uh, hosting this space um, on behalf of Materai um, to all of our guest contributors today um, and yourself, Paula. Um, what a fantastic! Uh, level of insight that you have um, in regards to not just thinking about the unique place of the environment, who we are as Māori, what does it mean to be natural, um, and some of the challenges that you will face as evaluators in not just validating a way of being, um, but uh, as, as was mentioned earlier, how are you or how are we as Indigenous people um, being part of not being better than or less than, but being part of this beautiful ecosystem of knowledge beyond theory, um, of known practice. So I really, I, I'm always so grateful for these beautiful webinars because I get to just sit in on some amazing drop knowledge and I'm just like, this is so cool. Um, so Fano, just to let you know, there is a Facebook group that Community Research hold, and that's an opportunity for those of you uh, we've got over 400 individuals that registered for today's session, so we just want to mihi to you. So if you've got some specific questions that you want to pose to Paula, um or Katsaraina here, please feel free to do so. Um, but now is a really great opportunity for us to have a, a bit of a dialogue, um, and I'm really, really interested uh, in getting some some more insight from you, um, Ehoa, about the key themes the key themes that you're going to be covering off in the conference. Um, and one of those that I saw was around uh, the role and impact of racism and privilege. And I'm just, I'm really interested, that's only one, but I am interested to know why is it that Matarai wanted to explore that um, more fully as a conference theme? Kia ora, Kay Marie. I guess um, 
one of the reasons why that is important for us to explore is that it's part of our reality as Māori evaluators. I mean, I remember working on a piece of work where, and a period of time in our not too just not too recent past where we actually had to remove the word racism, for example, from our evaluations because we don't use the R word was was the feedback we had. So um, you know, putting looking at reclaiming the the space, we called it that because we kind of were having this discussion about how important it is to honour to honour the realities of of um, those delivering the programs and if they are saying to us look some of the challenges that we face and the barriers we face is, uh, are about um, things such as racism such as the fact that people don't understand what um, our reality is they don't understand the impact of colonization and what that means for how we live our lives on a daily basis so um, and, and also the other aspect to that is that um, certainly here in Aotearoa we've been exploring looking at things from our own worldview. So when we come together as an evaluation association here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, we have our hui Māori, which is a space and a place for Māori as Māori to come together and share their experiences and knowledge. We've always found that's a really awesome space for whanaungatanga but it's also a really good space, a culturally safe space. Um, some evaluators, Māori evaluators, um, are working in unsafe places culturally where they're being challenged around the things that they're presenting, the findings that they have. Equally, we have some um, uh, Pākehā colleagues or um, non-Māori, non-Indigenous colleagues who work in this space who... Um, have made some really awesome contributions in kind of um, assisting us in that kind of communication of of what we mean and, and and just how to how to pose things, how to communicate our realities in a in because it is a different language. Sometimes we have to speak up to policy, you know. We have to translate. It is a translation thing that we're doing um, when we're sharing our learning. Um, I guess yeah. So it's a that particular strand will provide space and place for uh, people to share um, what's helped and hindered them. Hmm. I um I'm just uh, thinking about a report that I read recently that uh, Billy Billy Matheson uh, had developed um, on behalf of um, the Community Energy Network. But in there, he talks about, um, this is a, a bit of a side, but it's connected. Um, he talk, talks about social enterprise, and he talks about a continuum of social enterprise um, and the way that social enterprise has been designed and developed to uh, look and feel a certain way. But what he, uh, the provocation that he put forward is there's a strong concern that activism the role of activism the role of community development um can can be pushed out of the of the storyline of the narrative and i'm just thinking about that in relation to uh evaluation in regards to the role of activism the role of transformative change and the role of community development how do you see the evolution of Indigenous evaluation and ensuring that that voice, uh, the activism voice, is still protected um, and invited mm. in our thinking. Good question. I think, um, you know, there's lots of um, contexts, different contexts where people are saying what we're doing is not working, the system is broken, we need a different way. And if we think about the the high level of focus on co-design here in New Zealand um, and, and, and perhaps part of the reason for doing that is people are really uh, coming to a point of uh, recognising that the current way that things have been operating for some time is not working and it is those activists and those that are, would probably be um, in the margins who've been pushing back on um, the system and the way it operates. Um, 
So I would say that we have a very important role as Indigenous evaluators to give voice to the activists, to give voice to community, to give voice to whānau and, and those who are participating in the programs who are in the margins, who are who are on the receiving end of these so-called transformative services and programs. And we mm-hmm. kind of like as Paul O'Ferre, you know, talks about, you know, we need to turn the system on its head, actually. But in order to do that, we need to step aside. Some people need to step aside. We have to have faith and we have to trust that, say, maybe a ground up approach. Um, we can learn some things from a ground up approach. I don't know how many contexts that I'm in right now where more and more people are getting frustrated about um, the level of um, scrutiny that they are under. Um, you just think about Fano Order and the Fano Order approach. That was an initiative and an opportunity for us to be truly led by Fano, the families and participants of several different programs. Um, so yeah, we we've got a long way to go. We've come a long way, as as uh, my uncle Jim would say, and we've certainly got a, a long way further to go in bridging our understandings around what works and doesn't work for uh, different people in in their spaces. Kilda, yeah, thank you. Because I, I agree with you, the importance of having that um, those voices from the edge being heard and uh, enabled to have a space to help really think quite critically a, a, around the way that services are co-created and designed, especially if we are the target group uh, mm. or those research subjects that keep getting uh, torn to shreds by others' threads. And, and I really appreciated what um, Dr. Manulani said is that we've got to stop the othering. You know, we're not the others. Uh, we are a part of, um, we are deeply connected and uh, we have a significant role to play um, as we all do as part of the fabric of humanity. Sure. So I think um, I'm really looking forward to meeting her and um, learning more about her research and also really appreciated what Rich, Richard Weston was um, sharing around intergenerational trauma and and that the wisdom that can come from these traditional practices that we hold dear and still work really hard to bring into our present day mahi uh, is so important to our ongoing development as communities and as people and how that also impacts and influences the way that we operate as uh, as indigenous peoples here in Aotearoa and and globally. Mm. Um, I have a partai um, that's come in from our network today Partai is, what is the role of non-Māori evaluators and commissioners in supporting the use of traditional knowledge in evaluation theory and practice? Do you have examples of how or when this has worked well? Fantastic question. Well done. Very good question. Um, I think the role is to, um, you know, walk alongside, to walk alongside and be guided by, you know, on the one hand, one could say, uh, in certain contexts, you just sit back and you wait to be told what to do. Uh, the role is to be silent, is to listen and is to observe. The role is to ask questions and to inquire. I, I um, okay, okay, if I was to think of some examples where this has happened, it makes me think about the range of relationships that I have with um, um, non, non-Indigenous colleagues where we certainly do have roles in, um, to, to support, to affirm, to validate, to challenge, to push back on, um, on racism, on mainstream thinking, on um, views that seek to diminish the value of um, uh, cultural paradigms. Um, and I, I also think I've always, I've, of myself, I've had this little desire to see our allies, our non-Indigenous allies come together and, and turn the gaze on the system and, and focus their attention on assisting to dismantle the system, the parts of the system that don't work. You know, we have this saying, what works for Māori is works for all. So if we can get it right for Māori, if we can get it right for Indigenous people, we get it right for all. But not everybody actually understands that. So um, 
we all have a role to play, eh? We all have a role to play, going back to the, to Powder's um, analogy and metaphor of the, of the forest. Um, we can't do this work on our own. As Indigenous evaluators, we cannot do this by ourselves. We need um, our, our, our colleagues, our friends, um, and others in the wider system to support and come along for them. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, look, we've got one more question, but what I'm going to suggest is perhaps we take it offline uh, into our Facebook group. And this is from Huang Do, who has asked, um, is there an opportunity for you to kōrero about post-normal evaluation uh, as other scholars are talking about this recently, uh, for example, in the Conference of European Evaluation Association this year in Greece. So um, if you have a one minute to um, quote it all there, but what I'd recommend um, for, for you, Huang, is if you'd like to come across to the Facebook page, you can have uh, another quote it all with uh, Katarina there. But Ehoi, any, any thoughts about that particular part? I? post normal. So for me personally, I'm unsure of what post normal is, um, but uh, really keen to explore what that is and look at what our um, colleagues in, in Europe are, are positing about that. So kia ora. Kia ora. Well, look, Fano, thank you so much. We've got a couple of minutes left. So again, I really want to acknowledge uh, Matarai, uh, the uh, significant work that you're doing in helping to surface the important work of Kaupapa Māori researchers uh, here in Aotearoa and across the world. Um, I want to also acknowledge the approach that has become normal, but at one point of our lives was not. And that is that, re that research was done to a subject about mm. a subject but yeah. one area that indigenous indigenous methodology around research is about doing with conducting with co-creating with and that when you are engaging in a manner enhancing uh, relationship particularly around research it is an honor and a privilege to work alongside those that are involved in that research process and if it can contribute to their thinking lives um, experience of the world rather than us kind of sucking out information knowledge that's really powerful mm -hmm. and I really want to acknowledge you um, Ehoa because I know that this has been your practice for a long time and remembering my days back in child youth and family where that was quite out out the gate different but now it's actually become quite normal to have traditional knowledge practices and values as Paula mentioned as a normal part of practice um, and what is good for Māori can definitely be beneficial for all. So, again, just want to thank you for your contribution. Uh, we want to thank each of you, Fano, for tuning in today, uh, for your fabulous questions, Ehoama. Um, please go across to our Community Research um, Facebook page. Uh, we will also have the website um, live with all of the links and resources. And at the end of this, we will email out a video copy of this. So if you'd like to share this particular video with your colleagues that you work with. Anorere huama, a kanui ngā mihi ki a koutou, kataraina, paura, and all of the other whānau from Māteroe. Uh, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in February, and I look forward to come to the conference in Rotorua. Mauri ora ki a tātou. Kia ora tātou.